In this video, we're going to start the CUDA software free worksheet graphing absolute value functions under the infinite algebra one section. I'm going to split this worksheet up into three separate videos doing numbers one through four, five through eight, and then finally in the third video, nine through 12. So let's go ahead and get started. Our directions are to graph each equation. And number one, we have y equals the absolute value of x minus two minus four. Now graphing absolute value functions is actually easier than you think. We're going to use the t-table to graph each of these functions. Absolute value functions have a turning point that's known as the vertex, and it's either a minimum or a maximum more specifically. So let's ignore this equation for a second and think about y equals the absolute value of x. So when y equals the absolute value of x, if you have negative three, the absolute value of negative three, is equal to a positive 3, so negative 3 in the x direction, positive 3 in the y direction. Same with negative 2, it's going to be a positive 2, so the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. Continuing on to negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 is a positive 1, then the absolute value of 0 is 0, and then we'll get into positive 1, so the absolute value of positive 1 is a positive one, and so on. We know that absolute value of two will be two, absolute value of three will be positive three. So you can see the turning point occurs when that absolute value was equal to zero. So it's a straight line until the turning point, and then it's a straight line past the turning point. So we have a negative slope, and then immediately we have a positive slope, and all of that changes at that point zero zero. So the turning point occurs when the absolute value is equal to zero. That's true for all of the linear absolute value functions. So in order to graph this function, we're going to find the turning point, then we're going to find the coordinate for a number that's less than that turning point and a coordinate for a number that's greater than that turning point. So let's go ahead and start number one. Now that we have an understanding of how to graph the absolute value functions. So we know that turning point occurs when the absolute value is equal to zero. So we're going to look strictly at the absolute value function. So the absolute value of x minus two, we have to solve for when that's equal to zero. So we're looking at when x minus two equals zero. So we're gonna add two to both sides to get that x equals two. So our turning point occurs when x is equal to two. Now let's plug two in for x and solve for y. So we're going to have the absolute value of two minus two, which we know is zero, minus four. So the absolute value of two minus two is the absolute value of zero, minus four, which we know that the absolute value of zero is simply zero. So negative four is going to be equal to y. So when x is two, y is negative four. Now let's pick a point that's less than the value of two. So it's going to be to the left of our turning point or vertex. So let's choose one. When x is one, we're going to have the absolute value of one minus two and then minus four. The absolute value of one minus two is the absolute value of negative one and then we're subtracting that four. We know that the absolute value of negative one is a positive one, and when we subtract four, we get one minus four, which is a negative three. So when x equals one, y is equivalent to negative three. Now let's pick a number that's greater than two, so it's going to be on the right side of the turning point. Let's just pick three. We're plugging in three for x, so we're going to have the absolute value of three minus two, which is the absolute value of one, and then subtracting four. The absolute value of one is simply one. So we have one minus four, and that's going to give us, again, a negative three. So now we have the point three, negative three. So when x is three, y is also negative three. Now let's plot those. We have one, negative three, 2, negative 4, and 3, negative 3. And just like that, we'll be able to now draw our lines. 
starting at the turning point, drawing a positive slope, and then we'll draw the negative slope. And that's the answer to number one. Also note that this absolute value function is symmetrical. So if we were to draw a line straight down through that vertex, our points or our lines are mirrored. That's why when we went one less than the turning point in the x direction and one greater than the turning point in the x direction, our y values are both negative three. Let's go ahead and move on to number two. Set up our x, y, t table, and we're going to solve for that turning point. So that's when what's inside the absolute value is equal to zero. So x plus one, when does that equal zero? We're going to subtract one from both sides to get that x equals negative one. So when x is negative one, whatever our y value is, that's going to be our vertex. So we'll write negative one, and I like to put it in the middle of my t table so I know that I need to do a point that's less than that negative one value and a point that's greater than that negative one value. So let's go ahead and plug in negative one for x. So when we plug in negative one, we get that y equals the absolute value of negative one plus one, which we know is y equals the absolute value of zero, which is zero. So when x is negative one, y is zero. Now I'm going to do one unit less than the turning point in the x, so I'm going to choose negative two and one greater than the vertex x coordinate, zero. So now if you remember, we talked about the absolute value function being symmetric. Since negative two is one less than negative one and zero is one greater than negative one, those two should have the same y values. Let's check it out. So if we plug negative two in for x, we get that y is equal to the absolute value of negative one. So y is going to be equal to positive one. So when x is negative two, y is a positive one. Now let's plug in zero. When x is zero, we get that y is equal to the absolute value of zero plus one, which we know is the absolute value of one, and the absolute value of one is equal to one. So when x is zero, y is a positive one. So you can see, like I said, since it's symmetric, negative two and zero, since they're both one unit away from the turning point's x coordinate, or x value, they have the same y values. Let's go ahead and graph it to get our answer. Negative two, positive one, negative one, zero, and zero, one. It's a straight line to the turning point and then a straight line from the turning point. And I recommend using a straight edge like a ruler or another piece of paper when drawing your lines for linear functions. Let's move on to number three. Again, we're gonna have our t-table with x and y values. So now we're going to figure out our turning point. The turning point occurs when what's inside the absolute value quantity is equal to zero. So that occurs when x is zero. When x is zero, our y is a positive one. Since y equals zero plus one, which is simply one. Now I'm going to choose a point that's less than the x value, so negative one, and I'm going to do a point that's greater than the x value of zero, so a positive one. When we plug in negative one, we get that y equals the absolute value of negative one plus one, so that's going to be y equals positive one plus one, so y is equal to two. So when x is negative one, y is a positive two. Now let's plug in a positive one. If we plug in a positive one for x, we get the absolute value of one plus one, which we know is one plus one, which will give us two. So when x is positive one, y is a positive two. Now we have three points, including our turning point, so let's go ahead and graph this. Negative one, two, zero, one, and one, two. And that's the answer to number three. Moving on to number four. Again, with the t-table, we're going to locate the turning point, which occurs when what's inside the absolute value equals zero. And because we just have x within the absolute value, we know 
the turning point occurs when x is 0. So plugging in 0 for x, we'll be left with y equals 0 plus 2, so y is equal to a positive 2. And then I'll do one point less than that 0 and one unit greater than that 0. So if I plug in a negative 1, I get positive 1 plus 2, since the absolute value of negative 1 is positive. So y is going to be equal to 3, since 1 plus 2 equals 3. x negative 1, y positive 3, and then plug in a positive 1. The absolute value of positive 1 is 1, so 1 plus 2 is also 3. Graphing those three points, we'll have negative 1, positive 3, 0, 2, and then 1, 3. As always, remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Each subscription and like is greatly appreciated. And if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. In the next video, when we do numbers 5 through 8, I'll go more in depth with locating the turning point, And I'll show you a quick, simple trick to find the turning point, otherwise known as the vertex, without actually plugging in any values into the equation. So stay tuned for that and continue on.